The following video is sponsored by NordVPN. Stay tuned for a message later on in the video. The Ocarina of Time, one of two Zelda instruments on the cover of Hyrule Historia and one of few main Zelda items and instruments that survive to the end of the game that bears its title. Well that and the transition to the next adventure of the hero and even to the end of this one in the battle against Majora. Which begs the question, does the Ocarina of Time still exist in the world of The Legend of Zelda to the era of the wild or was it lost to the brutality of time itself? In this Zelda theory with Zeltic, after you like, subscribe and press the notification bell for both of our channels, we will do our best to give an answer for a journey that will take us through pretty much the entire Zelda timeline. But what is the Ocarina of Time? It's originally described as an heirloom of the royal family, an instrument passed down for countless generations through the mortal bloodline of the first Zelda of Skyloft. The ocarina was presumably passed down alongside a different key instrument, the Goddess Harp, which is the oldest instrument in the chronology, as it was played by the goddess Hylia before and during the first war which ended the first human civilization on the surface. The harp was then kept and likely played by the mortal incarnations of Hylia at least up until the timeline split, which we'll get back to. Even so, there's something different about the Royal Ocarina, as unlike other instruments in The Legend of Zelda, it is the only instrument with both time and teleportation properties as it may have been made from the same time-bending materials as the Time Shift Stones, or originally in Japanese, Space Time Stones found in Skyward Sword. This makes the Ocarina of Time into one of the oldest Zelda items that might have survived to the era of the wild beside the Master Sword, and it, as we all know, was forged from the even older Goddess Sword by the first hero, the Hero of the Skies. The sword itself is younger than the Goddess Harp which remained on the surface until at least Ocarina of Time. This isn't our explanation but Hyrule Historius, which expanded on the backstory of the Ocarina of Time. Quote from Hyrule Historia, page 86. The Ocarina of Time. Protected by the royal family, it is one of the keys to the sacred realm. It can play songs capable of manipulating both time and space. Its blue-white radiance brings to mind the time shift stones, found in the era of antiquity. Antiquity in the Legend of Zelda, you say? A time before during and after Skyward Sword, all the way to the founding of the Kingdom of Hyrule after the construction of the Temple of Time, the earliest point in time, and this one might even bring into question whether the Master Sword or the Ocarina of Time is older. Despite its plausible Time Shift Stone origin, it's likely that the Master Sword is even older. The main indication of this is that the Ocarina of Time served one primary purpose in Hyrule. Through the Song of Time and the Three Spiritual Stones, it opened the Door of Time to the chamber where the Master Sword had rested since the first hero, the Hero of the Skies, returned it to its pedestal. The Princess Zelda of the Era of the Hero of Time knew this, and as such, it's likely that the Ocarina was created around the same time as Roru built the Temple of Time on the ruins of the Sealed Temple, shortly after the Interloper War. To prevent any further conflict over the Triforce, the ancient sage marked the end of Zelda's antiquity by sealing himself, along with the Triforce, in the Sacred Realm, and made the Master Sword a key to this holiest of holy lands. If this is the case, it would make sense if it was the Light Sage Roru who first handed the ocarina to that era's Princess Zelda, or the King of Hyrule, as a parting gift, before beginning his guardian duty over the holiest relic of the Golden Goddesses. Roru sealed himself in the Temple of Time, behind the Door of Time protected by the Master Sword, which was the key to the Sacred Realm and the Chamber of Sages. Not long after the first Divine Kingdom was founded close to the temple, Hyrule really placed tight security on the Triforce by encrypting the path to it behind the secret ocarina, three spiritual stones, a door of time and a master sword. Not so different from NordVPN who provide even more secure encryption against hackers like Ganondorf with the Triforce. And even better, with NordVPN you can be secure on up to six mobile and desktop devices on one account. Which has also allowed me by using a US server to use streaming services like Hulu, which isn't available outside the US and Japan, watch the Tokyo 2020 and Beijing 2022 Olympics and other sport events in all languages I desire. English, Norwegian, Polish, even Japanese and watch the action abroad now that travel is slowly becoming a reality again. I, for instance, will be in Germany at the end of this month and will be using NordVPN there. 
and it is very easy to use. I just select the right country server I want to connect to, and in seconds, I'm fully secure while surfing or streaming at home or public Wi-Fi with next generation encryption on all of NordVPN's servers around the world. And right now, you can get a two-year plan with a huge discount by heading over to nordvpn.com slash commonwealth to get an additional bonus gift of four additional free months. It's completely risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So head over to nordvpn.com slash commonwealth and be more secure than Hyrule, where Princess Zelda seems to always mess up the security of the kingdom and gets the land into trouble. Anyway, the Ocarina of Time had to exist from the creation of the Temple of Time and was passed on from generation to generation of the House of Hyrule until the era of the Hero of Time, when after allying with the green-clad fairy boy from the forest against Ganondorf, Zelda and then Impa shared the following details about the Ocarina of Time. After telling you the creation legend and how the Triforce came to be, Princess Zelda follows up with the following quotes. The Temple of Time is the entrance through which you can enter the Sacred Realm from our world, but the entrance is sealed with a stone wall called the Door of Time, and in order to open the door, it is said that you need to collect three spiritual stones. And another thing you need is the treasure that the royal family keeps along with this legend, the Ocarina of Time. We must not let Ganondorf get the Triforce. I will protect the Ocarina of Time with all my power. He shall not have it. You go find the other two spiritual stones, let's get the Triforce before Ganondorf does, and then defeat him." The Impa of this era reiterated the importance through the following quotes. Ganondorf's target was one of the keys to the Sacred Realm, the hidden treasure of the royal family, the Ocarina of Time. Realizing that Zelda most likely had the ocarina, Ganondorf staged a coup the moment after Link set for Hyrule Castle Town with the three spiritual stones. Nevertheless, he failed to catch Princess Zelda, who instead threw the Ocarina of Time in the Castle Town moat to Link. Link then played the Song of Time on the Ocarina of Time, opened the Door of Time with it, and placed the spiritual stones, pulled the Master Sword and was sealed in it for seven years, but also opened the path to the Triforce of Power for Ganondorf. Upon waking up as an adult, the Ocarina followed Link, and especially in his encounters with Sheik, who played the harp, to teach the child in an adult's body the songs that would lead him to the temples. What followed after Sheik's reveal in the Temple of Time was the path of victory or fall against the King of Evil. In the scenario that brought his triumph, after the sages and Zelda sealed away Ganondorf, Link returned the Ocarina of Time to adult Princess Zelda, and she sent him back to relive his lost years in the child timeline. Link, give the Ocarina of Time to me. As a sage, I can return you to your original time with it. Peace has returned to Hyrule. It is time for us to say goodbye. Now go home, Link. Regain your lost time. Thank you, Link. Goodbye. With this act, the Ocarina of Time stayed with Princess Zelda in the adult timeline branch. But what happened to the Ocarina after this? Roru had fulfilled his duty. The Triforce was split, with two out of three pieces in the possession of the royal family of Hyrule, and the Triforce of Power remained with the sealed Ganondorf. It seems that the next Hyrule Castle was built on the Temple of Time, as it includes the Master Sword in its pedestal, but without any further mention of the Ocarina, which leaves us with two options until Ganondorf's attack and the creation of the Great Sea. One, the Ocarina of Time was destroyed by Zelda as it was no longer needed, or perhaps was lost at some point by the royal family before Ganondorf's invasion. Or two, the Ocarina survived all the way up until Ganondorf unleashed Hell and brought the sealing of the Kingdom of Hyrule under the Great Sea. We know that this Princess Zelda, the daughter of King Daphnis, was sent away with the Triforce and her retainers, so perhaps she was also sent with the Ocarina of Time. It's entirely possible, but it's also possible that it just remained in the castle until the era of the Great Sea and the final battle against Ganondorf in the adult timeline, which brought the flooding and destruction of the Kingdom of Hyrule and, with it, probably the Ocarina of Time. This notion is supported by the fact that we never see or hear anything about the Ocarina of Time in New Hyrule, which leads us to the conclusion that the Ocarina of Time was most likely lost at some point in the adult timeline. Next, we have the child timeline, 
the only timeline where we know that the Ocarina of Time left Hyrule with the child hero of time on a pony. All after the hero of the adult era warned the princess, showed his Triforce of Courage mark and received the Ocarina prior to departure with this following quote. You're already leaving this land of Hyrule, aren't you? Even though it was only a short time, I feel like I've known you forever. I will never forget the days we spent together in Hyrule. And I believe in my heart that a day will come when I shall meet you again. Until that day comes, please, take this. I am praying that your journey be a safe one. If something should happen to you, remember this song. This reminds me of us. The goddess of time protects you. If you play the song of time, she will aid you." End quote. Whoever this mysterious goddess of time was, whether she was simply another role of an existing goddess like Hylia or Nehru, or a separate deity entirely, she may well have helped in the creation of the Time Shift Stones, or the Space Time Stones as they're called in the Japanese version. Hyrule Historia notes a similarity between the Ocarina of Time and these stones. Its blue-white radiance brings to mind the Time Shift Stones found in the eras of antiquity. And as mentioned earlier, the Time Shift Stones are Space Time Stones in Japanese, Space Time being simply the inclusion of time as a fourth dimension. Regardless, in the Child timeline, the Ocarina was then taken by the Skull Kid in the Lost Woods, who kept it up until Link reclaimed it in Termina and used it to play the Song of Time to repeat a three-day cycle, manipulating time to defeat an impossible foe. Though, more interestingly, in the very end of Majora's Mask, we hear this tune. Saria's song, which suggests one of two outcomes for the Ocarina of Time in the Child Timeline. A. It was kept by the Skull Kid, or B. Link kept it until returning back to Hyrule. Both are possible, but as a noble spirit, it is more probable that the Hero of Time kept the Ocarina of Time to one day perhaps return it to Princess Zelda. As we all know, this dragged on, and before Link even returned to Hyrule, years passed. Years that Gandalf used to invade the kingdom, destroy its capital of the Temple of Time minus the Master Sword, and unite all races to defeat him. As a result, Ganondorf ended up as Malice in the Twilight Realm, while Link might have brought back the Ocarina of Time, which from this point on may have stayed with the royal family and the treasury with the royal insignia past Twilight Princess and Four Swords Adventures. Needless to say, so far the Child Timeline seems to be the best source for an Ocarina of Time survival. But what about the Downfall Timeline? Here it might have been destroyed right after Link's fall and Ganondorf's transformation into Ganon after claiming the complete Triforce. Or it survived thanks to Princess Zelda after she, together with the sages, sealed the Demon King Ganon away in the Sacred Realm and kept the Golden Land turned Dark World shut until the Imprisoning War, when Hyrule's military elite sacrificed their lives to keep Ganon sealed. Though even this couldn't prevent Hyrule from decaying into a tumultuous land with traitors in the royal court, or dark wizards striking during the Low Rulian Crisis, and then again with the end of the Golden Era. When the original land in the south crumbled, Ganon then rose again and imprisoned Zelda, causing yet another confrontation and then battle to prevent his revival. As much as we'd love to see the Ocarina surviving all of the Downfall Timeline's invasions, it's pretty unlikely. The Downfall Timeline is fittingly named. The Kingdom of Hyrule is broken into ruin time and time again. With the multiple apocalyptic falls of the kingdom just in this timeline branch alone, the instrument was most likely lost or destroyed. Which means that if the Ocarina of Time was to survive throughout the entire Zelda timeline in any branch, then it would be the Child timeline. But there's a twist. Breath of the Wild and its sequel take place in a strange place in the Zelda timeline. Essentially, so far in the future that it doesn't really matter which branch they take place in. Everything before is just a vague period of legend remembered only as the Era of Myth. An event similar to the Elder Scrolls Dragon Break. A groundbreaking event that much like the original timeline split, somehow may have brought all three branches to merge together, back to one linear, unified line and with relics items and even dangers of the three branches may have survived in the Breath of the Wild timeline and its royal family. A crucial event that brings three back to one and indicates the following. 
If the Ocarina of Time survived in the Child Timeline and not in the other two branches, then the Ocarina is now back into all three of them, after the split was ended, long after any of the pre Breath of the Wild Zelda quests. The potential convergence changes everything. With the Ocarina of Time potentially safe with the royal family, it would likely continue to remain so in Hyrule Castle through the Golden Age of Sheikah technology, leading to the Calamity 10,000 years prior to the Great Calamity, which brought the destruction of central Hyrule, but not its castle. Instead, it was merely occupied, guarded and neglected. And since the interiors pretty much survived, so could the Ocarina of Time if it was hidden, say in the Great Hall or the private quarters of the king himself. In this case, it might still be there. You see, the Great Hall was blocked by rubble in Breath of the Wild along with the king's private quarters. And with this in mind, who knows if the Ocarina of Time, along with some other ancient items like the first Zelda's Goddess Harp, is also hidden here. We don't want to go into too much Breath of the Wild sequel speculation, but with the castle already floating under Ganondorf's influence just like in Ocarina of Time, and with multiple smaller references to Ocarina and Skyward Sword, we'd love to see the reunion of a trifecta of three ancient, powerful items. The Goddess Harp, Master Sword and the Ocarina of Time are closely connected to both the creation of Hyrule and the timeline splits during Ocarina. So reuniting them at the very end of the timeline would be a perfect connection between old and new. The Goddess Harp, though it goes unnamed, may have also been in Ocarina of Time as the harp used by Sheik, supported by Hyrule Historia. The harp in Skyward Sword looks a lot like Sheik's harp in Ocarina of Time. Could it be the same one? The harp changed its appearance over the ages, but so did the Master Sword, since 1998's Ocarina of Time was long before its design was mostly standardised. For instance, the Master Sword and Hylian Shield were standardised by the Zelda team first in Twilight Princess, and then altered one final time to give us our current designs with Skyward Sword. The Immortal Goddess's first incarnation as Zelda was born before Hyrule itself. And now, there's the current latest incarnation of her spirit, who saw the kingdom's complete collapse. The first hero who forged the Master Sword, and the last hero to wield it. And, of course, the origin of Ganondorf's hatred and malice, and his latest, greatest, and possibly final rise to power. These three souls bonded throughout history will meet again in Breath of the Wild's sequel, and I'd love to see them accompanied by three sacred items from Hyrule's history. Can you imagine how powerful it would be if Ganondorf sits in the castle with these three items, as a kind of master of the timeline and as the only individual through the Miser's Curse that has continued down the timeline, just like the Goddess Harp, the Master Sword and the Ocarina of Time? Now that is a connection that would bring The Legend of Zelda full circle in this sequel, without pointing to any other specific timeline branches beyond the unified one. And the Ocarina as a miracle survivor might have a role to play for all of this along with the Master Sword and possibly the Goddess Harp, which would also fit if all these three instruments seen in the official Zelda 2018 concert art are used in the Zelda team's Grand 2022 title. And that's really it, a long way to go for the Ocarina, but hopefully just a miracle that we need in a game that might bring resolutions and combinations that will blow our minds. But what do you think? Did the Ocarina of Time survive until the end of the current timeline, or was it lost in all three timeline branches after the split? Or perhaps even during the Great Calamity 100 years ago? Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to Commonwealth Realm and Zeltic, and press the notification bell to not miss any future Zelda theories, Breath of the Wild and sequel videos, and much more Zelda and Nintendo. But now, as I shout out the patreon.com slash commonrealm patrons, be sure to check out Zeltic's part of this collaboration, another great Zelda theory that you will definitely enjoy. <laughs>